everybody welcome back to my channel and if you're new here welcome to my channel Joe knows adventure and today I'm gonna go over some things um, that you may need on your next trip to Alaska so let's get started As you know, I just got back from Alaska. My trip was in June. Yes, it's September. And so the last cruises to Alaska have already started to uh, depart and um, the Alaska cruise season is pretty much over. But you can always plan for the next year and maybe these little tips and tricks will help. Or if you're going to a cold um, adventure like I'm going to next September I'm going to Iceland and cruising down to London so some of these will be available for that for me to do that as well so I'm gonna go over a couple things that are what what I think when you go to Alaska you definitely need to have one of the things first is a pair of binoculars so it doesn't have to be the great big ones or whatever, but um, we, we decided that these were just fine. They had plenty of zoom in them and we were able to catch some of the wildlife that was um, around, especially Glacier Bay when you're going up and um, you might see some eagles or you wanna take a better view of uh, even we went whale watching and so these are quite handy. They can go in your little backpack. Um, we both had one. They sell them on the cruise ship as well, but you, you can get these on Amazon. You can get you know the greater, bigger ones or any of the sporting goods stores. Um, I've had these for years and years. I believe it or not, used to go deer hunting. And so we, we used to use our binoculars for that. So, um, Anyway, they're quite handy. I've had them for years, like I said. So a pair of binoculars is something that's always a good thing to have. Also, another thing is um, you're taking Alaska cruise. You wanna have a good camera. Um, I do everything on my, my phone. It's the iPhone and uh, I do all my videos from that. I, I do have um, a good camera. I'm kind of lazy with it but that doesn't mean I don't think you should have one. Um, some of those cameras, they have some really good attachments where you can even zoom in and get some really good photos. And um, a good DSLR or a good, a good camera is always something nice to have. For me as traveling solo, um, it's hard for me to have a camera and a phone. And, and if I'm posting something on my Facebook page, um, I use my phone and then I use my camera. It's just too much equipment in my hand. And that's just for me personally. And uh, for just videotaping for YouTube, my phone seems to work fine. And um, so I'm happy with that. But um, a good camera is a good suggestion. And if you're gonna look for one for next season, now's the time to start looking and you can uh, plan ahead how much you need to spend for a camera. There's plenty of them out there. A little bit of things for your organization on your cruise ship uh, for Alaska is um, a little laundry bag. Um, some some um, YouTubers have suggested that you take like a laundry basket that folds up like a hamper. Doesn't take up much room in your suitcase. This definitely doesn't take up much room. It, um, I got this at TJ Maxx, so something really simple, just zips out and folds out to a nice size bag. Perfect for me, for my um, laundry and my clothes. So it's just a nice, folds out just really nice. And like I said, anything that you can have that doesn't take up much room in your suitcases, because Alaska, everything is, um, uh, thicker because <laughs> you're not wearing for summer clothes. So that's anything that you can use that'll uh, make it convenient for your suitcase. So a good little laundry hamper along with that. Another thing that's really convenient. Now I, this is something that um, 
I I never used to like lanyards. I you know I wear a necklace and I want to look nice and everything. But I started using this um, after COVID. I went to my first cruise out of New Orleans was um, to the Caribbean, and I was waiting in in line and they had um, little vendors and they had these for sale. Um, I'll tell you. I'm back to using lanyards again. So it holds your little cruise card in there. And um, also it's, you know, so you can just, but I thought I had to take this out all the time, but with the new, at least with Norwegian, if I wanted to order a drink or something, or you just put your card up there, I didn't have to take this out of my, um, the plastic holder at all, which would be another inconvenience. So a nice lanyard, um, this happens to be sparkly. I have a black one that's a little sparkly, so I can change. And if I want to, I can always take this off and put it in my um, my purse so that I'm, I'm not carrying a lanyard around when I get off in a port. So a good lanyard is, a, is really something that you wanna have, wh whether you're going to Alaska or not, right? Another thing that's really convenient is when you fly, um, you know, you have your luggage tags on it uh, with your name and everything. But when you get to a port, um, the cruise ship gives you um, a, a, a room card so that you can attach it and they want you to fold it and staple it onto your suitcase. Well, that is okay, except for the paper gets all wet if it's raining or it gets lost or it gets torn off even. So I went on Amazon and I bought, and it came in this big old package here, so I bought some lanyards, uh, not lanyards, but cruise tags. And it very convenient, it's attached, it goes right over on your suitcase and it holds your, your room card in here. So, it not only it'll say Norwegian, it has your a place where you can put your name on it and um, just put this on your luggage. Um, I noticed how convenient this was. I mentioned it in my last video that when you get to the port in Seattle, um, the porters are taking the luggage so you can go and start checking in. Well, if you don't have your luggage tag on, they'll do it for you but there was a big line to do that. So when I came up and I already had my luggage tags on and everything, they just they just took it right away. I didn't have to wait in any line. So it was very convenient to have this and highly suggest. Now, um, the cruise ships all have different, um, uh, like a Carnival might be a little wider. Norwegian is, a little, um, um, not Norwegian, Norwegian is this but um, the Royal Caribbean is a little bit more on the narrow side. So just look at what ship you're gonna be taking and um, get yourself some um, room card covers. So that's, that's a good thing. Also, um, something for the, the room, of course, is uh, magnets. It helps keep the room organized. The walls are all magnetic. They do have some, um, well, at least for the, the cruise ship we were on, we were on the um, Encore, and they had a couple uh, little knobs that were put out so you could put a jacket or something on. But I always um, have magnets just to hold all my, you know, I go on an excursion, I get all my tickets, so you, they give them to your room. If I've ordered them through the uh, cruise ship, or if you order your um, your excursions ahead of time, you can just put them in the order of the day. So I I went I actually went to Home Depot and got some really heavy duty magnets. So these are real nice, big, and oh, they hold everything. They're real sturdy. I do have a couple that I've had for years that that's have the little clamp on them, so I can put something on. These are for hanging things on. So just some just some magnets for your room and it keeps you organized. So you you know every night they give you um, 
papers to tells you what's going on the next day. All cruise ships do this, no matter what they're called. It's like a little paper and it shows you everything. So another thing, just to take them and hang them on the wall. And that way everybody has, um, they know where, what's going on for the day. So that's another thing. Um, <laughs> I, I have to admit, I'm a little afraid of the dark. So um, I, I kind of work it out. I'm, I'm good and everything. I have a little flashlight if I, I carry with me in the suitcase. If the rooms are really super dark, I can reach over. But I found these little like LED candles. They're not, you can't, you can't use lighters and stuff in your room. So I just put that in the bathroom and it just, it's just a nice little glow. And um, if you put it up on the shelf, it glows against the mirror and back. Or if you want to put it in your um, the stateroom along the ledge there by your room. So it's just a little glow. It's nice. It's lasted a long time, but I can also replace the little battery in there. You know, the little round ones that you get either for cameras and that. So a little candle. doesn't take up much room. I just, I just have a little bag and I put them all in there. So that's that. I also have, and I always carry it with me. Um, <laughs> I actually got this from Norwegian, but it's a little bottle opener and a wine opener, a little wine key. So I have this with me always. You never know when you're gonna have to pop a bottle or uh, open a bottle. Just something I have, even if I'm going to um, a hotel before I get on the ship, it's handy, it's with me, so I always carry one of these. All right, so let's get with some of the clothes. All right, so when you go into Alaska, you always, and you've probably heard this on every video, to dress in layers. The thing with Alaska that I found, which is different than the Caribbean or going over to the Mediterranean, um, is it's very casual. Uh, Norwegian tends to be casual anyway. They just, you know, dress nice or that. But during the day, everybody's pretty much in jeans and sweatshirts or layers or you know, they get off the ship, it's um, rain jackets or layered with the rain jacket. So um, I always have to prepare for the weather. Um, Somewhere in there, it's going to rain or be misty. We went in June, like I said, um, the cruise season usually starts in May and goes on to the September. So you have the, the colder months, May and September. But it, it, the, we went through the beginning of the June and it, we went Glacier Bay. It was actually snowing up in the um, mountains, not on us, but it was cloudy and in that we even had one day where it was so foggy that um, <laughs> they had to blow the uh, fog horn. So you never know what kind of weather. And even if you have a balcony, it's kind of nice because you can go in and out of your room and you can sit on the balcony and, and, and that you're protected. Uh, not too many people are out there on the pool. Um, different activities that they can present for you. Um, the hot tubs were being used, the uh, spa area was being used because you can put your swimsuit on and stay warm. Um, Royal Caribbean has kind of like a solarium where they some ships have a retractable roof that covers the pool area. So just keep that in mind when you're going. You can still bring your swimsuit. Um, it, you can bring your swimsuit if you're in a pool before you get on the ship um, at a hotel. So keep that in mind. But for the most part, it's layers and casual. So um, I brought these along. They're uh, rain pants. I got them at, um, I ordered them online. They're from Columbia. And I ordered them a little bit on the big side so that if I, um, was out on an excursion and my jeans got wet, I can just pour these on over the jeans um, or I could just carry them on over the jeans and then take them off if it started to warm up. So uh, 
I did not have to use these, fortunately, but this is something doesn't take up much room, just like the uh, laundry bag and flat and light, so something easy. So I'm suggesting um, for men and women, some rain pants, and they don't have to be thick because you're already wearing jeans, but um, just something to wear over those to keep your legs warm and protected from the, the weather. Another thing to be sure to bring is gloves. Um, I had brought these. These are ones that you can use with your cell phone. So they're really nice and, and they kept my hands warm. And I don't like to have gloves that are so big that, you know, even if with this, <laughs> you can't still operate anything. But these were nice. They kept my hands warm. I also have a pair um, I'm going to get a new pair because I've had these for years, but they're really nice, but they're fingerless. So you just put them on like this and they kept my hands quite warm and I was able to do everything. Um, even just having a cocktail while I was on the balcony, I didn't have to have think something was slipping and um, if I needed to do anything. So this was real handy for me. Um, especially when I'm filming so much for YouTube. So these are, these are a couple suggestions for gloves. And the men, the same thing. They have the fingerless gloves for men as well, or you can just wear the, the bigger gloves. But to even have them in your backpack if you carry, or if a woman carries her bag, um, her purse or anything, you can just stick those in there real easy, or in the pockets of your jacket. I did use a scarf. I had a few scarves. Um, you can go through my Alaska videos. I had, um, I did each day and I did what I wore for that day. So you can go back and look at each one to see what scarves I wore. But I like to have the, um, I call them infinity scarves. So it was really easy just to, just to put it on, wrap it twice and with the jacket on, it just, with my short hair, it's really nice to keep my neck warm. So I, I really wore this pretty much every day. So a, a nice scarf, this is nice material. Um, in the, if I was walking around the ship on a sea day, um, I did have a, a different kind of scarf that would go with the top that I had on. So a scarf. And I did bring two hats. I brought this, uh, you need a nice hat. So they have so many cute ones out there that you can wear. And so I had this one and this was, it kind of matched this scarf, so gotta have that. But I had one that was, um, you know, the Seahawks and I had this hat here. So this was really nice to keep my ears warm. Um, if I was, especially on the balcony, especially for Glacier Bay, I didn't have to um, worry about getting my jacket and, and being out on the, um, the uh, deck. Some people will bring an umbrella. Um, this is just an example. I have a smaller one um, that I was gonna show you, but I think it's packed in a box somewhere. But um, if you, need an umbrella. For myself, it's hard to have an umbrella just for me and uh, try to film and everything, but some people bring. So whatever's convenient for you, um, if you like to have an umbrella, you know, even when you're in uh, Seattle, if it rains that day or in uh, Vancouver or in Anchorage and you need something to protect before you get, even get on the ship, it's nice to have an umbrella. All right, going along with that. When you're dressed in layers, it keeps you warm. So having a little rain jacket. Now this is a Columbia rain jacket. I buy my rain jackets like oversized, one size over what I would wear, just so that it's not tight and snug when I have a sweatshirt on underneath or or um, I'm layered, so I don't want to be so uncomfortable. So it's really light and, you know, they, they have these all over. I, I bought a rain jacket for 
gym because he didn't have one and I got it at uh, Dick's Sporting Goods and it was only $20. So it was just another thin and light one like this and it was easy for him to just put it on over his sweatshirt and uh, he's kind of warm blooded. He didn't have to be so layered, but for me, I needed to be layered. So I had this also. So that was good for rain. I also had brought my regular jacket. This is, I call this as like a car coat. I, it has a liner, but I, I don't, I just took the liner out and had this so that it's easy to uh, as well to uh, layer and it has a hoodie and it was rain repellent so it was not going to get me wet so this kind of a jacket that i have i've had like i said i've had this for years um this happened to get from jc Penney's, this um this jacket here the hood is removable if i wanted to take that off but i did wear this a couple times wore the uh, rain jacket a couple times so i just utilized both of them depending on the weather that I was in. So layering, um, I have, I wore like a little tank top and I brought different ones. I brought, you know, a white one, a black one and a blue one so that I could put them under my shirts. Um, I was real, <laughs> I really looked like a, a native up there <laughs> with these, but I did have, and this isn't even a thick flannel one. So everything was to keep me warm, but not hot, not bulky. So I did have like the undershirt and then I had this on and, it, and then I just either wore the rain jacket or that, but layering, layering, layering. And if, if it gets warm out, you can take your jacket off and, and you're still, you know, still keeping yourself warm without getting too hot. And finally, a sweatshirt. Um, I brought just one sweatshirt and I brought this one and it has, you know, the front pockets here and then it also has a hoodie. So I was able to layer I uh, had a just regular t-shirt on. I didn't have, you know, this this is I use this for Glacier Bay because I was out on the balcony all day. So I had this and I had my jacket and this was an extra piece that was over. Um, so I was able to wear this at times. Um, just, just a sweatshirt, perfect for the day and um, like Glacier Bay because you're outside almost the whole day. Um, they open up the front of the bow. They have, um, now this is for Norwegian guys, I'm sorry, but they open up the front of the bow so that you can go out there and stand, but I didn't do that, it was just too cold. But you're going up on one side and when you're coming back, you can see the everything on the other side. And plus, when you're up at the glacier, the ship spends a little time doing some turns so everybody on all sides gets a chance to see. But I wore this all day and uh, we just stayed in our balcony. The only other thing that I would suggest is if, if you are going in Alaska and everybody says this, grab a balcony. It's so worth the, the extra money that you're gonna spend, only because the outdoor areas just are not warm for everybody to hang out. So some of the indoor areas get kind of crowded, especially if people are um, trying to get out to look at, you know, the glaciers and everything, and you have your balcony and you're able to, you know, bring food or you can order food or you can have your drinks. Um, we brought thermoses for our coffee. So I'd go right up to, up to the um, cafeteria, the garden cafe. I grab coffee and then I bring it back to the room and, and had coffee, hot chocolate all day. It was it was great. I think I even had tea with honey one day because um, um, I started towards the end of my cruise, I started to get a head cold and I was losing my voice. As a matter of fact, when I got home, I had no voice. <laughs> Probably a good thing. <laughs> but 
anyway so that's that's uh, pretty much what I have for you I I know that it's a quick but um, I just thought it, I had this thing sitting out and I wanted to uh, go over these things real quick if you have any questions I appreciate your comments and your questions if you want to know something about cruising um, to Alaska be, we'd love to answer your questions for you um, I am looking forward to more cruises, so I'll let you know what's next. So what's next? What's next in the cruising department for Joe Knows Adventure? I have a cruise in January. I'm going on the new Norwegian Prima. I'll be going out of Galveston and um, hitting the uh, Caribbean area. Looking forward to that. Honduras, um, Mexico, uh, Belize, and um, that, and, and to be on the Norwegian Prima which I'm really excited to see that ship and see what it's like. Um, I'm also going uh, a land cruise, land tour cruise, I guess is what they call it. I fly to London in May. I'll be uh, three nights in a hotel um, as part of the cruise. I'll be doing some uh, touring there and then uh, go on to catch uh, the cruise ship that's going to take me London to Copenhagen. So I'll be there for um, it's a little bit longer of a cruise, but looking forward to that. And then in September, I'm doing the um, Iceland to London and doing some of the uh, Norway areas up there in the fjords. So cruise, cruise, cruise. <laughs> I'm looking forward to sharing all of that with you. Meantime, between now and January, I'll be doing little bits and pieces here and there, uh, featuring some things here and around New Orleans, uh, some of the festivals and festivities. So um, looking forward to sharing that with everybody. So once again, thank you for joining me this week. I so appreciate each and every one. I appreciate the new subscribers that signed on this week. Thank you so much. Be sure to give me that thumbs up helps the algorithm. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and stay tuned for more from Joe Knows Adventure and I'll see you next week. Thank you again. Love you all. Bye.